Hi, and welcome back to our fourth part of lecture 13. So in the last little part, I just explained what the invertible matrix theorem is, and I just want to give you some examples of how one could use this theorem. So for example, let's say your question is, is this matrix invertible? So notice it's really a yes or no question, yes or no, if it's invertible. So I want to decide whether it's invertible. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the previous uh, previous page and I want to decide whether it's invertible and it says well if this equation matrix equation only has a trivial solution then the matrix is invertible so I'm going to do that the corresponding system here for system of linear equations for this matrix is 5x1 equals 0 then I have 3 minus x minus 7x2 equals 0. And the last row tells me that 2x1 plus 6x2 plus 2020x3 equals 0. And if you stare at that for a second, I know you're all experts at this now, that the only solution is x1 equals x2, which x3 are all 0. So remember that this is the case of the trivial solution. Because we have that this is a, only the trivial solution, that means that our matrix A is invertible. So we'll write that out. So A is invertible since D is true. Okay. One other thing, so this gives you a good example of how one can use the invertible matrix theorem to decide whether a matrix is invertible without trying to find the inverse. One of the last things I want to do today is just kind of talk about kind of J and K here, which is saying that there's a matrix that I can multiply to to give the identity on the left or on the right. Okay, and so let's make this a little bit more explicit in this theorem here. Say I have a square matrix, as I do here. And suppose that B is a square matrix that B times A equals the identity, then B is equal to the inverse. Or if you, B happens to have the property, if I multiply on the right-hand side, I get the identity, then B is equal to the identity. Now you may be thinking, well, yes, that's, that's what it means to be the inverse. But you have to be careful because by definition, B is the inverse of A if when you multiply on both the left and the right-hand side, you get the identity. But what the theorem says is that, no, you don't actually need to check both uh, multiplication on both sides. If you can check that your matrix works on one side, it will automatically work on the other side as well. That's what this theorem is saying. And that goes back to what the last part of this theorem, J and K, are saying that if you can find something that multiplies on the left or on the right to give you the inverse, then uh, you know that your matrix is the inverse. So let me just give you, instead of a, a proof, I already gave you a long proof earlier, so how about I just give you the proof of two? Um, so we're going to let X naught be any solution to b times uh, x naught equals 0. Okay, So x naught is any uh, solution to the homogeneous system. Okay, Well, then what else can we say about x naught? Well, then x naught is the same thing as i, the identity, times x naught, which is the same thing as a b times x naught which is now equal to a times b x naught, which is equal to a times zero, which is equal to zero, right? So this solution has to be equal to zero. So only solution to b x equals zero is trivial solution, right? But by the classification, So by, by the classification theorem, what this tells me is that B is invertible. 
So we are using the power of the classification theorem in order to prove this. And then we know that B inverse exists. So then A, which is equal to A times B times B inverse, is equal to A times, oops, rewrite this here, A times B times B inverse. This is equal to the identity times B inverse, which gives me B inverse. So to wrap things up here, we get that A is equal to B inverse, which is the same thing as saying that A inverse is equal to B inverse inverse, which is equal to B, which is exactly what we wanted to prove. And part one, a proof of part one is actually the same. So in today's lecture, there was a lot of kind of useful information and new ideas. The thing that you should take away is what is an elementary matrix is. You should also take away that we justified the procedure for finding the inverse of a matrix. And we also introduced the invertible matrix theorem. We'll have a little bit more to say about the invertible matrix theorem in the next lecture, but this is a good place to stop for today. Okay, have a great day and I'll see you on lecture 14.